السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقضاء من لساني يفقه قولي we begin with the praise that belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send his peace, mercy and blessings upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless me, to his family, uh, to bring uh, his family and his companions. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless me in my speech, to remove the defects of my tongue, to make my task easy for me and bless me and grace me even more of his grace and mercy, so that all of you can understand my speech. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Brothers and sisters, Alhamdulillah, we come to uh, night four, I would like to open uh, a beautiful hadith from uh, Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who said that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala He made Jannah and He made Jahannam and when He made them He called Jibreel Alayhi Salam Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala called Jibreel and told Jibreel go and have a look at my Jannah Jibreel Alayhi Salam He goes to Jannah He comes back and says Ya Allah Subhanallah, it's so amazing that anyone who hears about it would enter it. And then Allah mentions, Ya Jibreel, go and see the Jahannam that I have created. Jibreel alayhi salam, he goes, looks at Jahannam, comes back and says, Ya Allah, I fear that anyone who, it's so scary, anyone who hears about it would not enter it. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala surrounded Jannah with hardships and surrounded Jahannam with desires, with, with ease of life, subhanAllah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ya Jibreel, now go and see it. While Jibreel alayhi salam was walking or going towards Jannah, he comes back and says, Ya Allah, I swear by it. I swear by the hardships that are, are surrounding Jannah. I fear that none will enter it. Allah musta'an. And Allah says, subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Go and see Jahannam. And while Jibreel alayhi salam is going to the path of Jahannam, he comes back to Allah and says, I swear by Allah, the path is so easy that I fear that everyone would fall into it. Allah musta'an. Yes, brothers and sisters, Jannah is not easy. And just imagine Jannah with Rasulullah is the hardest challenge that you and I can get. Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Jannah has seven levels and the highest of them that is under the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Firdaus. This is where Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is where all the Nabi'een and will be there subhanallah. So when you see, when you talk about Jannah and Jannah, Jannah Al-Firdaus, there are very, very, very few hadith, very few things that that tell us how to get them, subhanAllah. There are the, the two classes that I took initially, Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa has spoken about daughters and then has spoken about yateen. And both of them, Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa has said that me and that person who takes care of them will be like this in Jannah. But in today's class, it is not about Allah's Messenger mentioning that you and I will be like this with him, but you and I will be in Jannah together in Jannah, Jannah al-Firdaus, alhamdulillah. And today, inshallah, since we have just nine nights and we have more than nine deeds that take us to al-Firdaus, to a place with Rasulullah in Jannah, I've made this part, I've made this class into three sections, one, two, and three, inshallah ta'ala. So that you and I understand that today we would talk about three things that collectively bring us to a position and give us a position in Jannat al-Firdaus with Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So let's now, before we get into the first part, understand what this class is about inshallah or what this lecture is about is just one word, that's it, just one word from these two, from these four amazing, amazing ayats of Surah Al-Nazi'at. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Nazi'at in Surah number 79 and Ayah number 38, 39, 40 and 41. Allah says, وَآثَرَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا فَإِنَّ الْجَهِيمَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَى Whoever prefers this life, whoever desires this life, falls into the love of this life, desires this life, 
Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَإِنَّ الْجَحِيمَ هِيَ الْمَعْوَى His destination is Jahannam. Allahu Akbar. Then Allah says in ayah number 40, وَأَمَّا مَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ وَنَهَا النَّفْسَ عَنِ الْهَوَى But the one who fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the standing before him and he Nahiya means to push away. He controls his desires. He controls his desires. فَإِنَّ الْجَنَّةَ هِيَ الْمَعْوَى And he will be in the best of Jannah, subhanAllah. He will be in the best of Jannahs. Brothers and sisters, today, Jannah and the place that deserves with Rasulullah, the Jannah al-Firdaus, the place that you and I would seek, look, try our best, is just how we you and I can overcome our desires, subhanAllah. Overcome our desires, that's it. And today, inshaAllah, we would talk about, we, we have many deeds that take us to Jannah. Many deeds that take us to Jannah. But Jannah al-Firdaus, really, really less. And inshaAllah, today I welcome you on this day, night, fourth night of Ramadan series, inshaAllah, where the topic is being with Rasulullah, and in particular today is the topic that I've chosen for tonight is going the extra mile. Yes, when you and I decide to go that extra mile for the sake of Jannah al-Firdaus, Allah just doesn't give us Jannah but gives us the place with Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So with this, I come to my first part and I open this with one of the most beautiful, beautiful passages of the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa taala says, "Waladina hum anil لَغْوِ مُعْرِدُونَ أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْوَارِثُونَ الَّذِينَ يَرِثُونَ الْفِرْدَوْسِ الَّذِينَ يَرِثُونَ الْفِرْدَوْسِ هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ Brothers and sisters, subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a tongue that can damage and destroy what even a sword cannot do, subhanAllah. Relations, friends, family members, parents, children, husband and wife, everything, subhanAllah. It's so delicate that just a tiny tongue, subhanAllah, can destroy everything that you and I have done or you and I have built up within people. And Allah's Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa says, talks about this beautiful month of Ramadan. He says that it is absolutely no point, no point you giving up your food and water for the sake of Allah if you cannot give up what? Evil speech, idle talk, backbiting, vulgarness, misuse of your tongue. So Allah's Messenger says there's no point. Subhanallah, you don't have to fast. Have lunch, have breakfast. In fact, have sahur and iftar. No problem. Subhanallah. If you're not going to make use of your tongue, then enjoy your sahur and iftar with breakfast and lunch because there's no point of fasting. Subhanallah. And this is why the scholars of Islam have said there are three levels of, of fasting. One, you avoid food and water. Second, you avoid the use of your tongue, the misuse of your tongue. And the third is where you give up this dunya. And for this month of Ramadan, subhanAllah. So the reward only starts from level two. It doesn't even start at level one. If you're giving up food and water and you've not, not controlled your tongue, there's absolutely no point of fasting, subhanAllah. Allah's Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa said a beautiful hadith. Allah treats a person with anger. Allah treats a person with displeasure. And Allah treats a, treats a person with hatred. Who? The person who has a loose and a vulgar tongue. Allahu Akbar. A person who has a loose and a vulgar tongue. With this, I come to the first part, hold that tongue. Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa says a beautiful hadith and a very scary hadith. Pay attention, brothers and sisters. Really scary, subhanAllah. Allah's Messenger says, A person may utter a word. A person may utter a word that he finds no fault in it. SubhanAllah. A person may utter a word that he does not find any fault in it. But yet Allah will put him in Jahannam for 70 years. Allahu Musta'an. Allahu Akbar. 70 years Allah will put him in Jahannam. Why? Just because he uttered a word that he thought there was no fault. But Allah hated what he, the speech that he used. Allahu Akbar. 70 years in Jahannam, brothers. You and I can't even put a finger in the candle for 10 seconds. Allahu Musta'an. How would you and I live in that fire for 70 years? And that fire is just not some fire. Allahu Akbar. 
See what Mu'ad ibn Jabal radiallahu anh says. Amazing, amazing hadith. Subhanallah. The entire Islam is in this hadith. Entire Islam is in this hadith. Mu'ad ibn Jabal radiallahu anh says, He says, Ya Rasulullah, tell me something. Advise me something. That how should I get the best of Jannahs? Now he says, how do I get the best of Jannahs? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi says, Paradise will be given the best of Jannahs will be given for whom Allah makes it easy. Subhanallah. That, no. Now understand who Mu'ad al Jabal is. Mu'ad al Jabal is one of the greatest, greatest scholars of Islam. Greatest scholars of Islam. Subhanallah. On halal and haram. And he asked Rasulullah, tell me something that will give me the best of Jannahs. Allah's Messenger responds, Ya Mu'ad, it is only Allah who will make easy. Allah will make it easy upon you. However, if you want to know the deeds that take you to that place, then listen to this. Allah's Messenger says, Worship none but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Observe your five daily prayers, pay your zakat, fast in the Ramadan, month of Ramadan, and go for Hajj if you can afford, afford to. Subhanallah, this is the five pillars. Alhamdulillah. Then Allah's Messenger said, He added, He says, Know the gates of goodness are many. From that is fasting. Fasting is a shield. From that is charity. Charity extinguishes, or rather, you know, it, it, it puts away your, or, uh, your, your sins. And then he says, pray in the middle of the night. For that is the most, the, the, the gates of Jannah. Then Allah's Messenger Sallallahu said, Do you know what the root of, is, root of this entire matter is? He says, Islam. Do you know what the head of the matter is? He says, as -salah. Do you know what? Do you know what the peak is? He says, striving in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, just imagine this entire hadith. He's spoken about the root, the head, the peak of Islam. The five pillars. He's spoken about paradise, charity, qiyamul layl, everything, subhanAllah, everything that you can do in your lifespan. And then Allah's Messenger says, Ya Mu'ad, shall I tell you, shall I tell you, that how you can control all of this and how you can do all of this? Mu'ad ibn Jabal says, Ya Rasulullah, tell me, how shall I do all of this? Five pillars, Islam, practicing, Qiyam, everything, subhanAllah. Allah's Messenger held his tongue and said, hold that tongue, subhanAllah. Sahih hadith, he says, hold that tongue and Allah will make it easy upon you to do everything in Islam, subhanAllah. What an amazing hadith. Everything of Islam is based on what? Holding that tongue when it really matters. Allah's Messenger وسلم, said, He saw a dream and he, 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 he was taken in, in by night. And he says, SubhanAllah, I saw people. I saw people with copper nails, copper fingernails, SubhanAllah. Copper and huge and long, SubhanAllah. And he says, I saw them scratching their own faces, own faces, and literally pulling off their lips with their nails. Allah's Messenger وسلم, looked at Jibreel and said, Ya Jibreel, who are these people? SubhanAllah. Allah's Messenger felt it. He says, Ya Jibreel, who are these people? Jibreel السلام, said, Ya Rasulullah, they are the ones who eat the flesh of the brothers. He says, How? Kaif? He says, when they defame their honor in public. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. When they defame their honor in public. Today we have social media. SubhanAllah. You don't like an institute? Just post it. Defame the institute. Defame a scholar. Defame this person. SubhanAllah. How easy today you have. Just take a pic and just circulate it and then SubhanAllah. Brothers and sisters, don't do that. SubhanAllah. Look what Allah's Messenger says, you will scratch your face, brothers, for defaming somebody in public. Allahu Musta'an. And today, how easy you and I today as Muslims, Muslims, have just gone so down, so low to that level of just accusing and defaming people in public. Allahu Musta'an. What is Abu Musa al Asri radiallahu anhu, he mentions, he says, Ya Rasulullah, who is the best person in Islam, Ya Allah? Ya Rasulullah, who is the best person? Allah's Messenger says, Ya Abu Musa, the best person in Islam is the one who keeps his tongue and hands safe. He does not hurt anybody with these two. Nobody is hurt with these two. Subhanallah. Nobody. Subhanallah. And he says, Ya Rasulullah, how do I get salvation? How do I get salvation? 
Allah's Messenger وسلم, said, Control your tongue, control your tongue, keep to your house, and weep over your sins. Weep over your sins. Subhanallah. Brothers and sisters, ghiba, ghiba and slandering. What is ghiba? Ghiba is when somebody has done it and you spread it. Slandering is you make something that he, he's not done. You make it up and you spread. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive everyone, subhanAllah. <coughs> and guide us to this path of Islam. Trust me, it's one of the worst sins that you and I can do. Worst sins. Look what Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa has said about this. Two angels came to him and said, Ya Muhammad, get up, sallallahu alayhi wa get up. So Allah's Messenger went up, he went up and he went with Jibreel alayhi salam. And this is the night of Mi'raj, by the way. So he was shown a lot of blessings, he was shown a lot of punishments and, 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 and horrors. And one of them, one of them, Allah's Messenger says that a person was kneeling down, subhanAllah. You can imagine yourself because all of you have knelt out of the classroom. Right? You can imagine yourself. Imagine, you're kneeling down, subhanAllah. You're kneeling down. A man is standing up with an iron hook, hook, iron hook, and he's putting it inside your mouth and ripping over your scalp, ripping your mouth open until the back of your head. And when he removes the hook, he puts it on the other side. Allah musta'an. And while he rips off the other side, Allah will bring this side back together. And this will happen until when, brothers? Until the Yawm Al-Qiyamah, Allah musta'an. Allah musta'an. Until Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Allah's Messenger literally shook. He says, Ya Jibreel, who is this man? I can't see this. Who is this man? Allah's Messenger was told by Jibreel alayhi salam, Ya Rasulullah, he is the man who misused his tongue. A liar. Ghibat. Slandering. Everything, subhanAllah. That's why, brothers and sisters, that's why Allah's Messenger وسلم, guaranteed Jannah, subhanAllah. He guaranteed Jannah. He says, I, Rasulullah, I, Muhammad, guarantee you Jannah. Who? For the one who can guarantee me what is between your two jaws, meaning tongue. I guarantee him Jannah. So now which Jannah does Allah's Messenger guarantee? SubhanAllah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Mu'minun, Surah number 23, Ayah number 3 and so on. Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنِ اللَّغْوِ مُعْرِضُونَ Those who guarantee their tongue, those who turn away from lagwa, evil talk, backbiting, vulgar talk, ghibat, slandering, everything, subhanAllah. Those who turn away, Allah says, Ulaika humul warithun. They will inherit. What will they inherit, subhanAllah? What will they inherit? What does inherit mean? Inherit means it will come to you automatically, subhanAllah. Allah says, Alladheena yarithun al firdaus. Allahu Akbar. Allah says that they will be given the highest grade in Jannah. Firdaus. Will it be pulled back? Allah says, Hum fiha khalidun. They will live therein forever. Allah Allahu Akbar. They will live therein forever in Firdaus. <laughs> Meaning, with Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, SubhanAllah. Only for the one who controls his tongue. So brothers and sisters, my dearest brothers and sisters, today, SubhanAllah, we have a loose tongue. We really definitely have a loose tongue. On every matter we have a loose tongue. You have to comment on every single thing, SubhanAllah. Every single thing we have to have an opinion. Control, hold that tongue. Why? Because it's Firdaus. It's Jannat al Firdaus. Subhanallah. And you deserve a place with Rasulullah because you went the extra mile in controlling that tongue. Subhanallah. I come to my second point, brothers and sisters. Allah's Messenger says one of the most beautiful hadith. Allah's Anas ibn Malik says, Inna Allah ahlihim. He says, Inna Allah ahlihim. Ya Rasulullah. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن الله أهله من الناس يا رسول الله قالوا يا رسول الله من هم قال هم أهل القرآن وأهل الله خاصته الله أكبر الله أكبر brothers and sisters in Islam the first topic was holding that tongue the second is today سبحان الله we can Today, we can read the Qur'an in Arabic, we can read the translation in a, in, a, in a hundred different languages, subhanAllah. We can listen to the Qur'an while reading Taraweeh. We can distribute the Qur'an on the streets. 
We can listen to the Quran when we drive. All of these things are amazing, subhanAllah. They are great. They are rewarding and they are great, mashallah. But Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says there are only few, by Allah there are only few who will be called as what? Ahlul Quran, people of the Quran, Allahu Akbar. If you notice, brothers and sisters, subhanAllah, if you notice, mashallah, just before Ramadan, we had about 45 to 50 days of IPL, right? We could spend four hours on a match with really easily, subhanAllah, really easily four hours on a match. You take a movie which is like two and a half, three hours, we still have, and it, time flies and we just don't know how it's gone. We take a football match, it's two hours and plus, subhanAllah, or close to that. We take our leisure time, everything, subhanAllah. You take your entire life, you would plan to remove time for everything that is a priority, everything that is an entertainment. But brothers and sisters, how many of us would actually remove time for the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How many of us would remove time for the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? If you only knew the reward that today I would mention subhanAllah, the reward is what? Nothing but being with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in Jannah. So why don't we remove time? 15 minutes, 20 minutes, subhanAllah. That 20 minutes class of a Quran looks so long. MashaAllah, Maulana, come on. 20 minutes, whoa. I'm already yawning. Right, subhanAllah. How, how easy a Quran session becomes so long while a movie becomes so short. SubhanAllah, brothers and sisters, understand. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you something amazing in return. Amazing in return. Only for those who remove time for his kitab. And that's why I narrated this beautiful hadith in the beginning of the second point. Is who? Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu. He says, Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, What? He says, Inna Allah ahlihin min al nas that there are people that Allah chooses for himself from the annas, from the people. There are, there are khas, Allah's loved ones. They said, Qalu, Ya Rasulullah, manhum, Ya Rasulullah, O oh, oh Rasulullah, O oh Messenger of Allah, who are they that Allah chooses? Allah's Messenger responded, Hum, they, Ahlul Quran, they are the Ahlul Quran, they are the people of the Quran, wa Ahlullah, and they are the people of Allah, and khasatuhu, meaning they will be closest to him in Jannah, subhanAllah. Who are the Ahlihi? Who are the Ahlullah, the people of Allah? The ulama say when they do five things, take a note, five things. Number one, when they memorize the Quran, yes, it's a part of it, but only 20% of it. The ones who memorize the Quran first, be in a state of memorization. You don't have to finish the whole Quran. No problem, subhanAllah. Start. Start. The ones who memorize the Quran. Today is one of the big nights, subhanAllah. One of the ten Ashra nights. Make a niyah that you want, you want to be the Ahlul Quran. Make a niyah, subhanAllah. Don't start with Al-Baqarah. You'll take Yawm Al-Qiyam and finish it. Right? Take some surahs that you can do well, subhanAllah. The one who memorize it first. Second, the one who study it. Or rather understand it. Second is the one who understand what they read. Third is the one who study, contemplate, katabbar al-Quran. They go reflect. Word, meaning, what does this mean? What does word, how this word is connected to a different ayat? They do tatabbar. They understand with studying the Quran. Number three. Number four, they implement it. You know what's that, what that means? It's not there in our life. What is the Quran? Another six days, the Quran will be only heard next Ramadan. <laughs> MashaAllah. I'm sure all these sisters must have said, How many people are going to read? Right? I've read four times in SubhanAllah. And the best part of the Quran in everyone's house is amazing. It's, up, it's above the TV. Right? Somehow they wrap it in the red cloth and just keep it there. Number one, memorize it. Number two, Study, understand it. Number three, who study it. Number four, who implement it. And number five, who teach it. SubhanAllah. Just don't keep ilm. Teach it. Teach it. Whether it's your wife, whether it's only your son or daughter, teach it. One ayah, teach it. SubhanAllah. I'll just tell you four things and see what the reward Allah subhanAllah says. Allah subhanAllah says, 
See, there's difference between the Quran, right? A lot of us think that we only read Arabic, 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 the whole Quran, 10 times in, in Quran, and we don't understand anything. Tala'a, tilawa means to re recite, to read. Qara'a means to study it. Now listen to this hadith. Allah's Messenger says, Man qara'a harfan, not man tilawa harfan. Allah's Messenger didn't say, Man tala'a harfan, whoever recited one verse. No, Allah's Messenger says, Man qara'a harfan, whoever studied one letter. SubhanAllah. His reward is 10 for every letter. And I don't say Alif Lam Neem is a letter. I say Alif is a letter, Lam is a letter, Meem is a letter. SubhanAllah. Have you ever pondered over these verses? Ham Meem, Qaf, Yasin, Alif Lam Meem. What's the next ayat? Everything about the Quran. SubhanAllah. Everything about the Quran is a miracle. Study it. You'll know the miracle. You'll know the power the Quran has. Second, Allah's Messenger وسلم, said, now this is one of the greatest, greatest, greatest hadith. Ahl al-ilm, people of the Quran, people of knowledge cannot be matched with any nawafil deed. Any nawafil deed. No matter how much you pray, no matter how much you fast, you cannot compare an Ahl al-ilm, the people of knowledge. Allah's Messenger says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in a Sahih hadith, He says, the one who goes out and learns one ayat, memorizes one ayat, studies one ayat, just one ayat, is better than the one who prayed a hundred rakats. Subhanallah, hundred rakats, and the one who studies one chapter, min babul ilm, from the chapters of knowledge, he has. It is better than praying a thousand salahs. Thousand salahs, Subhanallah. This is Ahlul Quran, brothers and sisters. Spend time, Subhanallah. All of us can distribute Qurans on the street. It's really easy. But removing time and coming to a Quran class, that's tough. That's really tough, Subhanallah. Study the Quran and you'll know how beautiful the, the miracle of Allah is. The words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Remove time, brothers. Why? Why am I telling you? Listen to this. Allah's Messenger says, خَيْرُكُمْ مَنْ تَعَلَّمَ الْقُرْآنَ وَعَلَّمَهُ The best of you, the best of you are the ones who learn the Quran and teach it to others. So teaching is a part of your being great. So remove time. Remove time and I'll end with one last ayat. One last hadith. Remove time. Remove time. As Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, those who re remove time and learn the Quran, study the Quran, what they did with the Quran, Allah will call them on the Day of Judgment. SubhanAllah. Allah will call them on the Day of Judgment and say, Iqra, read, recite. Recite as how you would do it on this life. Recite. And your position will be where you stopped. And if you have memorized the whole Quran, if you have studied the whole Quran, implemented a lot of it, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will give you the darajat where? In al firdaus subhanAllah. In al firdaus So brothers and sisters, listen to this advice and then I'll move to the next point. Listen to this advice carefully. Make the Quran your companion. I'll repeat this again. Make the Quran your companion and the Quran will make you the companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. By Allah, by Allah. You make the Quran your companion today in this life and you see how the Quran will make you a companion of Rasulullah in Jannah. Come on, guys. Voluntary work is, you can do it, but be a part of the Quran with it. That's amazing, subhanAllah. I come to my third and final point, brothers and sisters. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, one of the most hardest words, hardest words, and not for you, not for me, all right? These are verses for whom? For verses for Abu Bakr, verses for Umar, verses for Abdurrahman, Sa'ad, Abi Waqas, Talha, Uthman, Ali, Zubair, and so on. The verses are for them, subhanAllah. Why? Because this verse was revealed on them. Allah says, Am hasibtum an tadkhul al jannah? Do you think, O oh Sahabas, do you really think, you Muslims, that Jannah is easy for you? Think about it again. Allah says, I will test you in the greatest thing that you love. And what is that? Wealth and yourself, subhanAllah. Two of the greatest things that we love. Wealth and yourself. Yes, brothers and sisters, do you think that you and I will get a place with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam without, without being tested in what we really love? When you love to be with him, do you not think that Allah will test you in what you love in this dunya? SubhanAllah. How can you even think 
that I would keep my money secured and still get a place with Rasulullah in Jannah. Allah musta'an. Don't even think about that, brothers and sisters. Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, the one who strives with himself and with his wealth, the one who strives with himself and his wealth, Allah has made degrees in Jannah and he would be in the highest of them, highest of them. Subhanallah. So brothers and sisters, when I say about, when I talk about true striving in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, many, many people would, would conclude wrongly and supporting deviant and radical groups. Understand, subhanallah, because a lot of youngsters are here, understand, please, please, by Allah, by the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do not get manipulated, do not get corrupted with the, the radical thought of ISIS, with the radical approach of, pe of blowing up yourself in a mall. Do not take this as a part of Islam. By Allah, this is haram, haram and haram, and this is not a part of Islam. This would never be approved by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Never be approved by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As it's always said, if suicide bombing was allowed in Islam, the one who convinced you would have blown himself first. Subhanallah. If suicide bombing gave you Jannah, the one who convinced you would have blown himself up. So understand it's not a part of Islam, subhanallah. It's the worst criminal act that you can ever do on the surface of the earth. Killing innocent people. Do not do that. Na'udhu billah, na'udhu billah. Come back for Allah's messenger says there will be a group in my, my, my nation who will be called the Khawarij. Who will go out of Islam. Who will kill people like this in the name of Islam. But they are the dogs of Jahannam, Allahu Akbar. Dogs of Jahannam. Let us live like believers and not dogs, brothers and sisters. Believers are Izza. So inshallah ta'ala, what can we do? How do we strive today? What's the best way of striving today? Today when you look at our ummah, no matter where you go, subhanAllah, from the Middle East, whether it's down South, Southeast Asia, wherever, subhanAllah, subcontinent, wherever you go, Name one thing, one thing that you and I are struggling as an ummah today is education. Is education. By Allah today, it's the greatest weapon, it's the greatest need to educate Muslims. To, to stand up and stand for the Quran and Sunnah. That is what you and I need to do and protect, protect institutes that do that and I call all the deviant and radical groups if you really think that you're supporting and standing up for the sake of Allah leave it and come and learn this deen by Allah learn spend time on learning this deen subhanallah then you will know what the true cause of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is brothers and sisters striving in the cause of Allah with your money with yourself in, in the hardest of times is the greatest 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 Ni'mat, greatest blessing and the greatest reward that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give each and every one of us. And one of the greatest ways to protect this deen, brothers and sisters, is to protect places that teach the Quran and teach the sunnah of our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Just imagine, subhanAllah, just imagine if the sunnah is eradicated from this earth. Can you even imagine if the sunnah is eradicated from this earth? While having sunnah, we have so many sects. What if sunnah is not even there? Allah musta'an. Can you even, even imagine a day when the Quran does not exist? If the Quran never existed. What would happen, subhanAllah? Who is it? Who is responsible for it? You know, we ta always take a casual way as Muslims. SubhanAllah, somebody will take care. Right? SubhanAllah. Why not you? Why not you? What have you done for Islam, brothers and sisters? What have you done for Islam? Wake up. It's high time, it's really, really high time that you wake up and connect yourself to something or the other that, is, that you are a part of the Islamic development, the part of Islamic growth, the part of the Quran, the part of Sunnah. Wake up and be a part of that. I swear this is the time, most important times that you and I as an ummah are going through, subhanAllah. Wherever in the globe you are, we are being thrashed. We need to stand up for Islam. We need to stand up for the Quran and Sunnah and protect it and preserve it. For verily, by Allah, the one who protects the Sunnah, the one who would stand up and protect the Sunnah of our beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will surely, surely deserve a place with him in Jannah. 
And I'm not saying this. I'm not saying this. I'll tell you, subhanAllah. I will tell you a hadith that will tell you that you deserve a place with Rasulullah in Jannah. Brothers and sisters, imagine the people of Badr. The Badr, subhanAllah. They were 313. Does anybody know, even before the battle, the dua the Prophet ﷺ prayed? SubhanAllah. Does anybody know the dua the Prophet ﷺ prays, prayed? He says, Allahumma in tuhlik, ya Allah. SubhanAllah. Allah's Messenger's words before the battle of Badr started. He says, Ya Allah, if this band, if this group of Muslims gets killed, gets eradicated, we lose today, Ya Allah, I fear. I fear that لا تعبد في الأرض Nobody will worship you on this earth SubhanAllah And I call upon you people If people, if institutes fail If institutes are being eradicated of the Quran and Sunnah Then who would stand up brothers and sisters? You and I have to support each other You and I have to support each other As Allah's Messenger وسلم, said something amazing SubhanAllah Like I men mentioned all of us today sitting here who have money, take, take this as a good, good hadith, subhanAllah. Take this as a reward and go back home and enjoy it. But make sure that you are a part of this theme, spending in it. Allah's Messenger وسلم, said that the highest ranks of Jannah, the highest ranks of Jannah have been occupied. Have been occupied. The people came and said, Ya Rasulullah, by whom? He says, by the rich who spend. Subhanallah. He says, but the rich who spend, the poor people came and complained, Ya Rasulullah, how can they get the highest position? How can they get the highest place? When they fast, when Allah has bestowed them, they, they pray, we pray. They fast, we fast. We don't have anything, but they spend in Allah's cause. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah's messenger looked at them and said, Hada fadlullah. This is the father of Allah that whom he chooses. To, to be with him and to be with me, subhanAllah. So brothers, if you have the money today in your pocket, then you are selected by Allah SWT to be one of those highest positions. The only thing is, do you have the heart? The only thing is, do you have the guts to do it? Take Ahl al-Sufa, the people of Sufa. How many people, subhanAllah, if you start counting the number of Sahabas that would spend for the sake of this deen, to spend to say to protect the Quran and Sunnah, subhanAllah, it just went, it, it goes crazy, subhanAllah. Abdul Rahman bin Auf, Saad bin Abi Waqqas, Uthman bin Affan, Umar bin Khattab, Abu Bakr, you name it, brothers. They would just go on and on and on and on in just protecting the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet, subhanAllah. Brothers and sisters, understand one thing before I conclude. Understand one thing before I conclude. They, the Sahabas, defended the Prophet ﷺ physically. The Sahabas defended the Prophet ﷺ physically. You and I can't do that. But you know what you and I can do? We can defend his sunnah with, with our wealth. We can defend his sunnah with ourselves. And this is what you and I need to do. Allah's Messenger وسلم, said, and I end my talk with this. He says, As-sadaqatu burhanatun. As-sadaqatu burhan. He says, charity is a proof of your iman. SubhanAllah. Charity is a proof of your iman. I end my talk leaving with the question, brothers and sisters, how much of your iman would you take? How much of your iman would you have to take it that to be with Rasulullah SAW in Jannah? How much of your iman would you put to be with Rasulullah in Jannah by Allah? The choice is yours. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.